If you've been waiting for a model that delivers exceptional character consistency, edit flexibility, and zero demand on complex nodes, this is the tutorial for you. Flux One Context Dev, a powerful open weight model. That's so in this beginner friendly video, I'll walk you through the installation process, help you build a simplified, clean workflow without complicated nodes in Comfy UI, and demonstrate how to edit characters across multiple scenes. Before we begin, let's visit the base models page here to download the required files. First, download the Diffusion model Flux1 Dev Context FP8. Save this into Models Diffusion Models folder. I have created a folder here for my Flux models. Back to the page, download the VAE model. Once you click, this takes you to the Hugging Face page. Download from here. Save it under Models, VAE folder, and save this here. Then we need a text encoder files. So click to download the ClipL model, save it into Models. We go to Text encoder folder. Mine is downloaded here, as you guys can see. Back to the page, we need to download either the text encoder FP16 or FP8 versions. So in my case, I'll go for FP16 save it into models go to your clip folder i have both versions here but you only need one to save storage space now if you are running on a low vram you can use the gguf models available here for flux context download any of these models save it into the models directory under unit folder then you also need the GGUF text encoder models. So download any of these as well from the page here. Save it into your models directory. Go to clip folder and save this here. Once these are all downloaded into the right folders, make sure to update Comfy UI using the bat.file in the directory. Once this is completed, start Comfy UI to use the updated version. Before getting started, make sure these custom nodes are installed for this workflow. I'll be using the Anything Everywhere node, RG3 custom node, the GGUF custom node, which is optional, and also the Ultimate SD Upscaler, which I'll demonstrate later in the video. So let's go back to the canvas. Let's start with a simple text to image workflow. Right click to add a node, we go to Advanced. Go to Loaders, select Load Diffusion Model. I'll zoom in on this node. Then select the context model which we downloaded. In my case, I'm using the Dev Context FP8 model scale version. If you downloaded a GGUF model, then use the GGUF unit node instead here. Then choose the GGUF model you have downloaded. Next, we go to add another node go to advanced loaders dual clip loader for clip name one select clip underscore l clip name two select t5 xsl fp16 or the fp8 if you downloaded that then change the type to select flux once again if you are using the gguf model then use the gguf dual clip loader here then make sure to choose the gguf models you have downloaded for the text encoder files. You can also check out my full GGF video on how to get the right models and also install the custom node in my previous videos. So now let's add the VAE node, then select the Flux VAE model. Recording this video, I'm using the earlier SFT file, but you can use the Save Tensor version. This is still fine. Everything works well using that. Now let's connect these nodes. Drag out the diffusion model, move down to select K sampler. Next, drag out the dual clip loader, select clip text and code. This will be our positive prompt node. Then drag out the positive prompt since we are using Flux. Search Flux, select Flux guidance. Let's change the guidance to 2.5 recommended using the Flux context model. Then drag the guidance into the positive conditioning of the case sampler. We are not using a negative prompt, so drag out the positive clip node once again, go to search, type conditioning zero out. Then link that into the negative input. For the image size, drag out the latent image, then search SDXL empty latent image. 
I'm using the one here from RG3. This will make it flexible to choose different aspect ratios and sizes later on in the video. Then let's pan to the K sampler, drag out the latent from the K sampler, then select VAE decode. From the VAE decode, select save image. Then let's also connect the VAE here. Sliding back here, I'll connect the load VAE to the anything everywhere node as I always do. I'll zoom out from here, then let's organize these nodes into separate groups. It's easy enough to follow. Now let's test everything so far to generate an image. I'll put in a random prompt here for a claymation style in the positive prompt. I'll use a landscape dimension of 1344 by 768. Pan to the K sampler, let us choose an easy seed number 27. Then CFG to 1 since we are using flags. I'll create a folder here to save the project images. Then let's zoom out from here to see the entire workflow so far. Ready to test it. I'll move up here, then let's hit run. All right, so the context model and workflow are working great. We got the text correctly and the visual style. However, the Flux context model is more effective for image editing. So how do we load images into this workflow using the context model? I'll move up here on the canvas. Let's create the input image workflow. Right click to add node. I'll go to image, then select load image. I'll drag and drop my character here from my previous videos. I'll make a copy of the load image node, drag the one above down. Then I'll go ahead to drag my second character image in here as well. To combine the two uploaded pictures into one image, we need an image stitch node. This is going to merge the two images, which will be used as a conditioner. So next we need a flux context scale node. This node will resize the combined images to fit the flux context model while keeping the original proportions. So connect the image, then the combined image goes into the latent space using a VAE encoder. The VAE will be auto-connected from here since we are using the everywhere node. If you want to see a preview of the stitched image, you can include a preview node. Uh, from here, let's group these as well. I'll zoom out from here, easy enough so far. We have an additional workflow, so how do we merge these? Simply drag the encode image from the latent, go to search, then type reference latent. This will bring the stitched image for additional guidance to the positive prompt. So disconnect the positive prompt, then this goes into this first, then link the reference latent to the flags guidance node. Zooming out from here, we now have both workflows connected, not too tricky, yeah? And before we run this, let's update a few settings. Prompting is crucial for strong control, so your prompts are important. I'll use a simple prompt here to have the characters hugging each other. Then I'll slide to the empty latent image. I'll use a batch size of two, so I can choose from the options of the generated images. Moving to the case sampler, let's try a different seed here of uh, 11. I'll keep everything else the same. I'll pull out from here, go up on the canvas, then let's hit run. All right, so this is done and certainly not bad. Since we used uh, batch sizes of two, we can choose the best results from here. The model maintains the consistency as we can see of both characters in the combined image. Although no hands were visible, these were created around the shoulders from the model. Let's further refine the results we have here. I'll right click to copy the final results. Back to the input workflow, I'll paste it into the load image node. Let's bypass the second image node. Move to the positive prompt. Then I'll type in to replace the background with the snow forest. This is all we need to do. Then let's go ahead to hit run once again. All right, done and ready. Let's choose the best image from the two options. Cool results, right? And this is saving us a lot of time without the need for background replacement. Let's push this even further to see what is possible. Once again, I'll go ahead to copy the final results. Let's pan again to the image input. Right click to paste the image in here. Let's move down to the positive prompt. This all feels simple, right? 
I'll use the prompt here to change their outfits into winter clothes. We have everything connected, so let's go ahead once again to hit run. All right, so just by using this simplified workflow and the Flux context model, I'm sure we can all do this according to any character's consistency and story you want to tell. Now, if you want to upscale any image since we are using a batch of images, double click on the canvas, then type image from batch. Select the node here, then drag the VAE decode in here. Choose the index number. Remember the first image starts from zero and one is the last image in our case. Then from here, I have used the SD upscaler to further improve the details. So I hope you guys are able to come up with some inspiring and exciting ideas. If you want to generate a full body, make sure to include that in the prompt. Use a portrait aspect ratio instead of a landscape, which works well. And if some of your images do not turn out as expected, simply use a different seed number for better results. All the workflows will be available in the description and a huge thank you to all the channel members and resource creators for supporting the channel in every way. Don't forget to leave a like for those who found this helpful in speeding your workflows and achieving easy consistency. You may see this video here if you are also interested in using the Flux context model without local resources. And I'll see you all in the next video.